Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. I'm still deciding if I'm keeping the, the microphone here in the video frame or not. Let me, know the comment, let me know in the comment section if this actually annoys you having the microphone here or not because in terms of uh, voice quality um, it, it may be a lot better since the microphone is way closer to me than the usual. As for this video, we have the review of the Adrenaline 23.9.1 and as I say in all my videos, 23 is the year 2023, 9 is the month September and 1 is the revision in that same month, the first revision of September. And these drivers bring a lot of new things, well, lots of new things actually, like HyperRx, one of the most awaited features uh, by some of the players, not all, not me for example, but some of the players. And as usual, I'm gonna cover all those things, so don't worry. And well, as usual, let's start with the release notes, like today's sponsor that's also releasing notes. Promotion notes. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Now finally, let's go to the release notes. Firstly, we start with new feature highlights with AMD Radeon Anti-Lag Plus that takes responsive gaming to the next level by introducing per-game profiling to intelligently pace frames further in order to reduce the input lag on RDNA 3 based Radeon GPUs. And if you want more information, you can click in the link presented there. AMD Radeon Boost now supports AMD Anti-Lag Plus and improves the image quality through awareness of mouse sensitivity, reducing the image quality impact of dynamic resolution switching during motion, typically seen with high DPI mice. AMD Software Adrenaline 23.9.1 introduces AMD Radeon Boost support for Resident Evil 4 Remake and Ghostwire Tokyo, which delivers extra performance and increased responsiveness with little perceived impact to quality. Well, as for the little perceived impact to quality, I kind of go with a doubt there. Doubt. And finally, the long-awaited AMD HyperRx. Introducing a new driver experience that allows users to optimize their games using AMD software features for their RDNA 3 based Radeon GPUs, achieving increased performance and lower latency with ease. AMD Software Adrenaline Edition 23.9.1 introduces the ability to intelligently combine AMD Radeon Anti-Lag Plus, Boost and Radeon Super Resolution to achieve improved performance and latency reduction than these features can achieve on their own. So what AMD is basically telling you here is that if you combine these features with HyperRx, they will actually perform better than when using them uh, separately on their own. For example, if using Radeon uh, Anti-Lag Plus or Anti-Lag Plus, uh, if you're using that with Radeon Super Resolution and so on, it will still perform worse than using the HyperRx, the HyperRx feature that uh, uses these, that kind of combines these and make them perform better in a, in a conjunction, let's say that, uh, rather than separately, which is actually nice. AMD also states what's next, with AMD Radeon Anti-Lag Plus, with initially supporting 12 games, new game support for AMD Radeon Anti-Lag Plus will be released through AMD Software Adrenaline Edition updates in the coming months. As for the AMD HyperRx, the HyperRx experience will continue to grow, including support for AMD Fluid Motion Frames to boost FPS using frame generation for DirectX 11 and 12 games in quarter 1 2024. And this is basically what AMD said in their presentation, that they would be doing the Fluid Motion, basically FSR 3 frame generation, uh, inside the game uh, in the next week. So possibly coming in some days, and then in the quarter 1 of 2024, we're gonna have the, the fluid motion, basically the frame generation, implemented in the Radeon software for the RDNA 3 GPUs. As for the fixed issues, we only have one fixed issue, with error message may be observed when selecting spatial sound format of Dolby Atmos for home theater. And this is one, uh, this is one really annoying error, and after months or maybe, I, I kind of... I kind of want to say years, after months or years, it is finally fixed for the MD cards. Thank you. But as always, it is not all cotton candy and unicorns, so let's go to the known issues. 
The first known issue is performance metrics overlay may report NA for FPS on various games, audio may intermittently become out of sync with video when recording from AMD software Adrenaline Edition with AV1 codec, the same happening for some driver versions already, just fix this ASAP AMD do it. Display may not reach correct brightness with certain games on select Samsung FreeSync Premium Pro monitors or TVs with local dimming setting enabled. Application crash may be observed while playing Baldur's Gate 3 with Vulkan API set on AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6900 XTX. And it is interesting that they fixed the X11 on Baldur's Gate 3, but they're still having problems with Vulkan API. So let's hope they fix Vulkan as well in the next driver versions. At least, I hope they do. And the last known issue is application crash or driver timeout may be observed while playing Smite on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 7900 XT. It is strange though that AMD removed the, the high idle power from the known issues because it is still happening, although it isn't happening as much, it is still definitely happening for, uh, happening for most people, sorry. Uh, some people have the power problem fixed with the 23.7.2 drivers, but as soon as they go to the, I mean to in the 23.8.1 drivers, I mean, but, that, but as soon as they go to the 23.8.2 drivers, the high idle power problem is still there once again. Uh, with the 23.9.1 drivers, I don't really know if they actually improved further without having anything in the release notes. So if your high idle problems were actually fixed or if they came back with these drivers, leave a comment in the comment section telling me that and telling all the other people that because some people had their issue fixed with a 23.7.2, others with a 23.8.1 uh, and others also got their problem back with a 23.8.2. It makes no sense, but sadly, it is what it is. Now, as for the things that I found with these drivers, basically my experience, in terms of performance, it is more or less the same, at least with the 7900 XTX and with the 6750 XT, a bit more 1% lows here and there, for example, in Modern Warfare 2, a bit more 1% lows in some scenarios in Starfield as well but nothing really astonishing performance is more or less on par with the previous drivers. Now, in terms of new things, uh, basically we have, once again, the HyperRx, and we also have redesigned buttons where the HyperRx feature is, Basically, where you select the HyperRx feature, we also have redesigned buttons with HyperRx and many other things. They basically redesigned with a, well, with a new design and it looks much better in my opinion. That's basically what they did. Now, if you don't really know what the HyperRx feature is, it's basically, um, it's basically a mix of Boost, Radeon Boost, Radeon Super Resolution and Radeon Anti-Lag Plus. The Radeon Super Resolution is basically the upscaling feature that you have inside your AMD drivers, but this upscaling fe feature can't use temporal upscaling, it uses spatial upscaling, so you're actually using FSR 1, which is much, much worse than FSR 2. There is a difference. Now, according to what HyperRx was to be in the beginning, for example, because HyperRx was to be released with the 23.7.1 drivers, but it was kind of postponed, According to the release to the to the release files that I had to the release notes that I had before, HyperRx is supposed to use the um, the FSR inside the game instead of Radeon Super Resolution if the game supports it. So basically, if you're running, let's say, uh, Modern Warfare 2 that supports Fidelity FX Super Resolution, it will use FSR instead of the Radeon Super Resolution. If you're going, for example, to Ghostwire Tokyo that supports FSR 2 as well, it will use FSR 2 instead of Radeon Super Resolution. So in in case the game supports temporal upscaling with FSR 2, HyperRx will indeed use FSR. But if the game does not support any kind of FSR, it will automatically use Radeon Super Resolution. Now, how does Radeon Super Resolution work? All you have to do is go to the AMD Adrenaline software, activate the Radeon Super Resolution and select the sharpening, the sharpening effect that you have, the percentage of sharpening that you want. And then you go to the game that doesn't have FSR, because if you're using Radeon Super Resolution, you most likely don't have FSR in that game. Go to the game and reduce, just reduce the resolution. For example, if you have a 1440p monitor, just go to the game and select 1080p, Full HD for example, and the, the Radeon Super Resolution will automatically upscale from the resolution you selected, in this case 1080p, to your monitor's native resolution, in this case 1440p. That's basically how Radeon Super Resolution works. You just go into the game, reduce the resolution, and Radeon Super Resolution automatically upscales to the resolution of your monitor. 
Another new thing like you know is the anti-lag plus, which basically increases the experience of the anti-lag. You can use anti-lag with the RX 6000 series, 7000 series, all those series, but the anti-lag plus can only be used by the Radeon 7000 series. I don't know if it has to do with the new instructions that the RDNA 3 cards have, uh, if it has to do with the AI cores, I don't really know, but they can indeed further improve the reduced latency with Anti-Lag Plus, which is also nice. We also have a redesigned performance menu uh, with things like, for example, the metrics available on the desktop as well. Now you can simply go there to that menu and enable the metrics on desktop. And in between tabs, you can actually select the metrics that you want to see and the ones that you don't want to see. Uh, in my opinion, it is just much better. They did a good job redesigning the performance metrics. All the data is now on the same tab instead of having several tabs. And you can just with one click enable or disable all the metrics, which in my opinion makes much more sense. And yeah, basically that's it. By the way, if you don't know what is Radeon Boost, one of the components of the HyperRx, Radeon Boost is basically a movement-based dynamic resolution. As soon, for example, as your monitor is just there, you're just looking at the, um, at the view, let's say, the resolution scaling will be at 100%. But as soon as you start moving, since it is movement based, as soon as you start moving, well, the, the dynamic resolution will kick in and will reduce your render resolution because as soon as you're moving, you're not looking much at the details. Um, so it, it isn't that bad. Let's say that it isn't that bad. But for me, I definitely don't want any kind of rating boost enabled because at least I can notice the difference when I move and I don't want to have, let's say, 150 FPS when I'm moving and just 90 when I'm looking around. I just want to be everything to be smooth and stable and I prefer it that way. But that's basically how it works. When you start moving on when, or when you're moving around, the dynamic resolution kicks in and reduces your render resolution. And as soon as you stop, the render resolution goes back to 100% and you have everything just crisp and, and easy to read, let's say. The only thing about the HyperRx is basically dynamic resolution is being used at the same time as the Radeon Super Resolution or FSR. Basically, you're having dynamic resolution, but at the same time, FSR2 is actually, or RSR, are actually upscaling that same dynamic resolution. So basically, when you're moving, the resolution goes down, but at the same time, FSR is actually upscaling that resolution, which is actually um, a thing that was well thought. And if they were using, let's say, FSR 2.2, or if they were using FSR 3, I really do hope that AMD brings a way better upscaling technique because the LSS 3.5 is much, much better than FSR 2.2, even more in terms of, of lower resolutions. I just tested it in some games, Starfield being one of them, and it is much better. Uh, so if AMD can actually improve the upscaling technique with, let's say, FSR 3, and they can actually make the Radeon Boost work with FSR 3, it may work well since the render resolution goes lower and if FSR 3 works much better in terms of lower render resolutions, well, you won't most likely even notice it and the performance will increase. That's just a thought that I had, but really, really good things with these drivers. And well guys, that's all for today's video, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video as it always helps, it really always helps. And don't forget to leave your comment in the comment section telling me and telling us your experience with these drivers. If these drivers work well, if they don't, if let's say uh, if you're having crashes like some people said they were having driver timeouts. And I can tell you right away that if you're having driver timeouts, check your overclocking profiles because it happened for example on the 23.8.2 drivers where uh, the overclocking profiles weren't working well so you have to create new profiles with the same exact values and then save them and then load those same new profiles because the newer versions of the adrenaline software may have kind of an incompatibility with the previous uh, with the previous driver versions profiles and that may cause stirs or crashes for example i was having an instant crash as soon as i was loading the, um, the oc uv profile uh, basically the power saving profile on my 7900 xdx but as soon as i created a new profile with exactly the same settings exactly the same settings i can load it with no issues at all so that's a thing to think about if you're having issues try this once again thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.